Welcome back to PJ Chen Designs Handbag Part 2 for 3D modeling with the Rhino 7. We are going to finish today with the hardware and also this uh, leather strip here and also the stitchings on the leather. Are you ready? Let's get started. So this is what we have left from the last time and we want to starting to making the hardware but to making a hardware I need to have something to hold the hardware so I'm gonna come in into the front view and I simply just going to draw something like this so we are going to have something follow this curve right there I can turn off the all snap and I'm going to follow the edge for something like this and coming back for something look like this. All right, so now I have this piece, I'm going to offset for whatever thickness is going to be. And I may need to have it coming down, get it closer. Because this line is the interior, we don't actually need too, uh, too far apart. So let me move this out like this. And I want, I'm going to offset this guy for maybe 1.2 and we'll get something like this and I'm going to blend in between here and here and in between here and here alright so then we have this outline let's go ahead to join it once we join it you can see then this is the line there and I simply just going to give it a, a width by coming into the solid and we want to go straight for extrusion, I want to extrude it on both sides, equal yes. Coming into the top view and kind of decide how thick you want this piece to be. Okay, and after you extrude it, it look really harsh. So, and we actually want to give it a fillet. So I want to have a fillet for 0.35 and I'm going to pick up chain edge equal yes. Going to pick up this and see what happened. All right. And see if it's checking on all the details, see if that work, if it work and we're going to work on the other side as well and click on here, click enter. Okay. And that will be the piece. All right. So this piece is actually going back somewhere about here and that is going to attach maybe too much inside that's going to attach to the handbag and I could have a bring this gap in a little bit more if you want to and I simply just going to make a screw as well and we don't need to actually physically making a screw but we wanted to make something look like a screw so I'm going to snapping somewhere there and just draw a circle and this circle just giving a little bit thickness and whatever you are drawing is always on the construction plane. That's okay. We can just bring it back. I may want this to be a little bit bigger because that could be also decoration as well. And we're going to do the fitted edges on both of them. Okay. So then that will be a shiny things over there. I also like to make it really look like a screw on the screw head. So I'm going to draw some sort of a rectangle again it is snapping there that's okay we're gonna bring this back out and i like it to be aligned with the center somewhere right there and this one just rotated for 45 degree something like this and we want to use that one to cut into the screw head that we have and using the bullying difference out of this one right so now this look like a, some sort of the metal and I'm going to change to other color and that's moving this one back tilt it fitting into whatever that piece of the letter going to be and then so it look like we have a hardware attached to this letter there Okay, so the next thing is we need to have uh, some sort of things called D-link and this link is going to linking over here and then it's a uh, hardware and it's another D-link to link to the strap. All right, so I'm going to hide in this one. To making a D-link, we simply just going to making a box like this 
and then I wanted to making an arc that's go snapping with this endpoint and this endpoint and coming up something like this, right? And we can explode at this box. We no longer need this one and join all of this. And maybe I want to turn on a control point. This link is a little bit too fat, right? So I want to get something like this. If you don't want it to be too tall, something like that. And we wanted to giving a really round corner by fit it. So I want to fit it. Maybe it's equal one here for the radius and give it something rounded. All right. So double make sure this is the size that you want. So let's move it back here. Take a look if that's too wide or this is too thin. Right, so I say they look okay, just maybe a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna bring down 1D scale like this. And I would like to creating the cross section. Again, I like to use the conning corner and for something look like this. And have this one moving from this quadrant snapping into the midpoint. All right, let's take a look. We are going to use the sweep one rail. You got rail one cross section, and then you'll get something like this, right? So this will be the D link that we are going to use. And let me flip it and move it to the center by using the align tool. We want to align vertical, type it zero. So it will be there, and then we're gonna Tilt it a little bit more. Moving this one, I want to make sure that that is hooking into this leather there. All right, so then again, this is a metal, gonna give you the green color there. So then you can see we have a link over there, and we're gonna have the same link over to the other side. Uh, we're gonna mirror that everything at once. So let me hide this one. So now we have the D link. We have the screw. We also have the ladder to holding this. And if you like the ladder to be wider, you can do so. So that way that feel like it's holding stronger there. So the next thing is, uh, uh, it is the hardware. So the hardware is going to look like this. Again, I'm going to create it a straight line on the side. And then this line, it's going to be mirror to the other side. Look like this. And again, I wanted to blend in between here and here. Maybe that's too much. So bring down a little bit like this and click OK. All right. So the other side, I have a circle over there. So I'm going to use the diameter going from here to here. And that is a circle over there. It can make it bigger if you want to, to be something like this. And you can trim each other. And again, also give it a little fitted. Always like to fit it something, uh, give it something more rounded looking. Okay, so then let's go ahead to join it. Now, if you feel like this is not deep enough, Still, the, the things we're gonna coming up, you can always, you know, turn on the control point and let's say I wanna edit this guy, have them going in a little bit like that. It's up to you. See, see if you like to do that. Okay, so I'm going to maintain like this and I'm gonna create the cross section. So again, colony corner. It's my favorite, and I'm going to snapping the center over here. And coming into the top view and deciding how thick you want this piece to be. So roughly the same thickness about our D link and coming back like this. So in my perspective, you can see something like this. We're going to use the sweep one rail. It might get in too tight there, but we'll give it a try. So we're going to have a rail cross section and we get something like this. Okay. So Make sure you record a history and then you get something like that. If you feel like, well, this is the circle right here is a little bit too small. I want to move in out a little bit. You can increase all of them at once. Okay. Because you record a history. So once you like it, 
we're going to cutting it open now this supposedly you will have a spring to go with it but this is for the design approach so we don't actually need to uh, prototype it so this is just for the design critique so as long as we get aesthetically correct then that will be fine and i'm going to make it like smaller like this all right so pretty much what we wanted to do is having a, that tiny opening so when we do the rendering it will make sense this is an opening there I think it's this way to be correct. Okay, so then we wanted to do is to boolean difference this guy out of this guy. So then we have that little opening there and we simply just want to give in a fitted edges, maybe 0.15 and we want to fit it on both sides. Okay, something like that. Now we have this and I simply just going to move it inside like this and tilt it and bring it something like this. Right. And we also need another D link there. So I'm going to making a copy of this D link and just rotate it and to be something like this. Perfect. All right, so now this is look like they are all hooking together. This one maybe need to move out a little bit because it's blocking the screw there. So I might need to move it out, even though we are not printed, but it need to be logically make sense, right? So then we'll have something like this. Let me turn this into the green color. So then we'll have something like this. Okay, so the whole set right here for this leather holder and this one, this one, and this one for all the hardware, we simply just going to mirror to the other side to get something like this. What we need to do next is the strap that is going to go from the front cover and go to the back so basically we want to draw something like this it's going to starting from here and it's gonna somehow coming down and coming over here and pass this handbag coming back and coming over here and snapping into here All right so i know it looked like crazy there but we wanted to project it to the C plane deleted it. So basically you get this curve right there. Okay. The second thing that we wanted to do is I wanted to have a curve. It go from here, coming out here and kind of fall into the ground and coming back, going there, wrapping around, coming over here, coming back here, coming back here, and something like this right and this might want to touch the ground so i'm gonna pull it down a little bit something like this you may want to have this and this actually get behind the handbag something like this all right and again this is quite like a mess right now because it's snapping everywhere. So in my front view, I want to project to C plane. They did the input, then I got something like this. All right, so for this curve right here and this curve, so we're gonna turn everything else down and then this is what we get. Let's give it a try. We want to do curve from two view and this view and this view and all we get it's a new curve that follow for both of them, right? But it is really complicated um, the form wise and it doesn't actually continue right there. It's broken right there, right? So we need to actually make this one a little bit longer. Uh, so I'm going to go back one step and having this one actually coming out a little bit there so hopefully it will be a continuous piece all right let's do one more time we wanted to curve from two view 
going from this one to this one. So now we have a little bit more completed piece there, right? I'm going to hiding those, that original one, we don't need it. And for this one, we have so many points there. So I'm going to rebuild this curve and see it has a 193 point. So that's changing it to be 18. And let's take a look, right? And if you feel like it's not as smooth, you can use the smooth command. And we can kind of drag in this guy to make it smoother, something like this. Okay, all right, turn it back to the handbag. All right, so now it is not exactly where we want it to yet, but we can kind of edit from here, it's much easier, so we can have this one moving out so the key is it shouldn't be inside of the handbag so this one need to coming out actually there's another point right there so to be like this and this one also need to be taller so something like this so you kind of need to tweak it into the way that is look more naturally defined like this one supposed to those top three points supposed to go close to here right so this line coming here coming over to the back and this guy those three need to be here kind of like this and maybe this one is too much outside so maybe this point this point and this point need to go inside a little bit more so it look more natural doesn't feel like it's like floating in the air kind of weird but it's kind of naturally to falling in there okay so uh and then we look at the top view look like i find there's a kink there so we kind of smooth it out there's a lot of kink there so this guy maybe coming in this one in the middle maybe coming out Right, so we can give it a try by piping and see how that look and, and see if you like the look. And if you don't like the look, you can always change it. Right, so we're gonna end up with something like that. Okay, all right. So if that worked for you, we did it this pipe and we need to really thinking about what is the end going to look like. All right, I need to have something starting maybe from here and coming out and making a loop and coming back to this D link over there, right? So then I gonna have something like this, right? So you kind of looping around this D link over there. And of course, this is gonna go crazy. Again, we want to project to the C plane. We want to delete the input, so now it will be straight. It's may, it may not touch him, but it will be straight. That's okay, and we can fix that. Um, we are going to use this curve, and let's go ahead to use the move command. I'm moving here from the near point of this guy here. And once you get that, we are just going to trim it short with the point on this curve there so then we can delete the ending there right um, to connect this guy here i might want to move it more toward to the center tilt it a little bit like that and then we're simply just going to blend let's blend in between here to this point right and double make sure it's not too much of a kink if it is too much of a kink i will suggest you cut back even more so this one is will be split by the point even more like this. So you got longer section is supposed to get smoother. So we're gonna blend in between this point to this point. And you can see it's a lot more smoother and we can pick up those and join together. All right, so now we are going to do the same thing on the other side. And I simply just going to mirror that guy 
to the other side right so I have that hanging there maybe too much of the angle I'm gonna adjust it back a little bit and I want to kind of a trimming pretty long like what our experience there so this guy will be trimmed with the point somewhere there and then we want to blend in between here to here and see how that go in the perspective if you like it just go ahead to join it okay so now we have this one we need to decide it what the handle or the strap will look like I would like to do something like this let's go ahead to creating a rectangle and it's going to be about that wide and then I'm going to have another rectangle Got just scale it down and stick it out a little bit here and having this guy to mirror to the other side like this and after that you can just uh, trim in all the things inside and join it all right and again this is the same idea like the handle that we have I'm going to have stitch here on both sides and then so I wanted to make sure they are nice and rounded that's giving a fitted for something like this all right if you like the middle part to be puffy you can do that as well and the best way to do that instead of using the square you want to use the conic corner my favorite shape and we're gonna making a copy reduce the size bring up here mirror to the other side and trimming each other and join it and then we can give it the fitted corners for point two actually I like this one better so let's use that one and then you want to make sure that this one it, it can fit into the D-link right so we are going to bring this one over here tilt it a little bit something like this and bring that one all the way up here and tilt it the angle and I wanted to reset the gumbo and so I can tilt it the angle toward to the direction I'm going to use right so and once you have that we're gonna do the same thing by mirror to the other side and you get something like this right so let's give it a try we are going to use the sweep one rail and you're going to do the rail cross section and the cross section there and let's see what how this go cool then we're gonna do sweep one rail one more time this is the cross section uh, sweep one rail one more time and we're gonna do the surface edge and we're gonna sweep and it will get something like this eh, I don't like it all right so now I notice this is not right in the center so we are go actually going to delete this one this one is right in the center for that but this one is not uh, forget two sides not completely symmetrical so we're gonna move it back here So at least it's now more in the center. Okay, let's give it a try. We're gonna do the sweep one rail, this one, cross section and the cross section there. All right, so we got this part down and I'm looking at it, just realize uh, maybe it's a little bit too thin, but that's okay. You can always, you know, change in this uh, profile and make it bigger. Now let's take a look on how we're gonna wrap it, this back to the hardware. If you're just using the sweep one rail and you pick up this rail and this is a cross section and you just hit enter, 
most likely you will get something like this because the way it twists uh, on the curve and it doesn't look really nice, especially when you're doing on a render. So what we like to do uh, to get to gain more control is we wanted to making a copy and bring it out so it's not going to touching there. So that uh, maybe out a little bit more. I would like to do. So maybe we want to bring out a little bit more. So let's give it a try. We want to do the sweep on rail and this is the rail this is the cross section go from here to here and remember we want to record a history um, make sure they are aligned this is not aligned and we're going to bring here and somebody asked me like how are they actually facing the same direction if you're thinking about this curve right here on the bottom and if you turn it over it is actually they all face interior if I put it in that way right so let's click OK and let's take a look now if you feel like this is still jamming into it because we recall the history so now we can kind of move them around I'm going to move this guy out a little bit so that way it won't touch there right so you can you can keep tweaking or changing the direction and maybe so maybe on this one you want to rotate it a little bit then you will get the real time update uh, we're gonna do the same thing right here so let's go ahead to pick up this curve we want to make a copy and bring out a little bit something like this and let's go ahead to use the sweep one rail you got a rail, you got a cross section going from here, coming to here. Make sure you record a history and hit enter. Make sure they're facing the same direction, stay in the same place. All right, so then we'll get something like this. All right, again, if you don't like it, that's fine. We can always adjust by rotating, scale it, and or moving into coming out a little bit more. All right, so then that is the something that, uh, we can uh, control over there now pick up all those curves right here and don't forget to join them once you join you'll say you break the history that's okay because we are not going to change anymore make sure it is solid that's uh, using the cap command to cap it all right the next thing is i would like to do in this uh stitches right there and i have one already here just wanted to show you um, what is a before after um, by side by side so i'm going to keep one there and show you how to make it now let's make sure that we need to have a curve on where do you going to have a stitch so we are going to use a command called extract iso curve and we are going to pick up this surface right there and I want one just next to it to, to show you how I do this one. All right, in this one, I'm just uh, draw a pipe and having this pipe is straight and you can work in that way. If you are really particular and then you wanted to work something a little bit nicer, I will suggest you to draw a curve and we can draw it on this view. And pretty much what we wanted to do is a curve look like this coming out and coming in like this. All right. And I would like to have those two aligned just using the gumball type it zero. So those two points will be aligned. You can make them the same height if you want to something like this. This moving into the center or you want them to more nature, you know, not so symmetrical look. All right, so what I wanted to do is piping this guy instead. So let's go ahead to pipe something small, maybe like this. All right, so this is going to be our stitches. And the reason I like this one better is because this one is more nature way. It will be because it is more like a, you have a hole and have this one going in and coming out. It felt like there's an action of going in like that. And there's a little bit distance. So this piece is not 100% just on the surface. So we'll get something more like this way. If you take a look on this. And I'm also going to turn it into the red colors. It's easier for you to compare. All right. So I want this to tilt it even a little bit more something like this come out a little bit more 
So it's not 100% just like stick on the surface. Maybe coming out too much. So let's move in a little bit. Okay, so let's give it a try. We want to use the array along the curve and we're going to pick up this object and we're going to pick up this curve right there. Now, in this one has 120, it's way too much. So let's try 100, enter, and see if you like the distance there, right? Um, let's double check with the render view. Maybe it's come out too much. That's all right. I'm going to record a history and let's hit enter. Then we'll have something like that. Well, it's actually not too bad. Um, maybe I need to have them come out just a little bit. So you feel like it's hopping, you know, on it. And you can do a comparison with just a straight pipe. Or you want to draw a curve, this kind of pipe, and see which one that you like it more. All right. So if you like it, you can put the stitch on a lot of different things or do your own pattern uh, for this handbag. If you like the way I model, I have a lot more secret to show you uh, with my membership program. It helping me as a small YouTuber uh, can keep making the video for you. So I hope you like this video. Let me know if you like to see more of this type of video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.